Good afternoon, Guardians, and welcome to episode 8 of This Week in Destiny, a weekly Destiny news program airing every Tuesday covering the latest game updates, announcements, community content, and more. We've got a lot to cover today, so we're going to dive right in, but first, a few words on our sponsor. This episode is brought to you in part by DestinyGhostHunter.net, which is an awesome site that allows you to enter your Xbox Live Gamer Tag or PSN ID, and it will automatically compile an organized list of which ghosts you haven't collected yet. When you select a ghost from the list, a short set of instructions will pop up along with a YouTube video showing its location. Super helpful for anyone who isn't sure which ghost they have and haven't gotten yet. This week's Heroic Nightfall is Fogoth, found in the Ocean of Storms on the Moon, also known as the Summoning Pits. The Nightfall modifiers are Epic, Nightfall, Arcburn, Light Switch, and Angry, and the Heroic modifiers are Heroic and Arcburn. The annotation on the screen will direct you to a Nightfall guide by Fruit Shaped, which was just uploaded earlier today. This week's strike was predicted by Mega Man EXE4 as per usual. however, following the reports we talked about last week regarding Bungie's change in direction regarding the game, he may not be able to predict the strikes for much longer. As we speculated last week, Mega Man has now confirmed that the changes Bungie has made to Xur server side have made it increasingly difficult to accurately determine what items he will be selling. Mega Man says we'll know by next week whether it's possible for him to predict Xur at all anymore. Last week, we spoke briefly about Bungie's change in direction as they've begun manually tinkering with parts of the game that they previously claimed were completely random. Whether or not this is a direct consequence of Xur's loot being systematically posted each week before he arrives at the tower, we're not sure. I expect we'll learn a lot more over the coming weeks leading up to the House of Wolves expansion. In the meantime, Bungie has updated the official Destiny Companion app to include the ability to view Xur's inventory while he is currently at the tower. So you won't be able to check ahead of time to see what he will be bringing, and you won't be able to check back in time to see what he previously brought, but if you're laying in bed and your controller is a few feet away out of reach, then this could save you the trouble of having to log into the game. In Bungie's weekly update, they went over some of the specific audio and visual options which will be debuting in patch 1.1.2. This includes the option to mute the in-game music so they can listen to your own, as well as separate controls for the game and chat volume which incorporate the most outlandish replacement for a slider that I've ever seen. I mean, whoever was in charge of making this must really, really hate sliders, because that would have been a far simpler and more elegant solution, but I guess we'll see how it turns out in-game. As for visual options, they've introduced three different colorblind modes to improve the game experience for those with color deficiencies. People have been complaining that Destiny in particular is a hard game to play if you had certain types of colorblindness, and Bungie was nice enough to include examples of what that might look like. This is what those of you who are not colorly challenged might see, but you can see how confusing the game might become if you saw it like this, which is Bungie's visualization of Deuteranopia. Of the three options, two of them are for different types of red-green differentiation and one for yellow-blue. This is truly a fantastic addition and I'm glad to finally see it being added to the game. If it's anything like Battlefield, you might also start seeing people opt to use these settings strictly for competitive reasons like making the enemy players stand out more clearly. Bungie has stated that as of later today, you will no longer be able to create or sign into Bungie.net accounts accessed through Facebook or Google. They're urging everyone to sign into their account via their PSN ID or gamer tag if they wish to participate on the site from this point on, so you might want to do that. And now to close the show, the Community Spotlight. There was actually a lot of cool things posted this last week. Here are some of the things that I thought were particularly neat. First up is YouTuber Steak Bacon's crazy luck, or I mean skilled precision, as he manages to take out five guardians in the crucible with five well-timed headshots. Leah Loves Chief posted some awesome pictures of her Warlock Vault of Glass costume on Twitter. It's pretty elaborate and also includes a couple of badass action shots from cosplay shoots. Redditor N64SSB has taken the time to write detailed portfolios for every main character in Destiny which rates their attractiveness. I've blurred out the text, since a lot of it is inappropriate for younger guardians, but I had to include it just due to the huge amount of time and detail that must have went into creating this list. And finally, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in the game, YouTuber Gangkring has managed to stack all three of the anti-gravity balls in the tower into a pyramid. Here you can see a map of where all three balls spawn in the tower. So that's all for this time. Remember you can find the link to everything we've discussed in the video description below. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, then you can hit me up on Twitter at RaidLeaderTV, and if you missed last week's episode, you can find it right here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday on RaidLeaderTV.